I couldn't be more excited to be here, um, but also realize like there's a tremendous responsibility with this job. So um, the fact that um, Mark and the whole leadership team is trusting me with this, um, I couldn't be, be more happy to be, be a part of this. So um, the uh, last couple of weeks, I've had a chance to you know, meet a lot of the leadership team as we went through the interview process. Um, you know, they like to say, obviously, Mark was the, the, the leader of that, that process, but um, Sandra Morgan and uh, Larry Delson, uh, Richard Seymour, who's, who's right here, um, Kenny Harrock, who's, who's a legend in our business, and, uh, and Tom Delaney. So it was a great process. It was fun to go through. And I can kind of tell from the first interview, like, there was a connection and a fit. And I think that's really important in this league um, to feel that. And I felt that at the, the first time through. So, um, and when I came back the second time, when Antonio was in there, I kind of felt that same thing. So um, it's so important to me and, and my family to be a part of the right fit in this league. And there's no doubt this is it. And um, again, just really thankful that they saw the same thing in me. They saw that same fit um, and that same culture fit. So, um, and the other thing I'll say is, you know, I haven't been here long. Um, but when you talk about the, the Raider way or the, the Raider tenets of commitment to excellence, just win, baby, once a Raider, always a Raider. I mean, I, I've heard of it. I know of it. I've seen it. Uh, but when you walk in this building, I mean, you can feel it. And I haven't been here long, but there is no doubt. I mean, first of all, you see it tangibly. I mean, this football facility is jaw dropping for me. I've never seen anything like it. It's amazing. The resources are amazing here. That's a credit to, to Mark Davis and what he's put into this team. But you see that right off the bat. Um, but you know, the second part is, and the Raiders are known for this as far as how they treat their alumni, how they treat their former players, how they treat the families. And it is something that other NFL teams and really all professional sports teams, they try and duplicate what they do here, but nobody does it like the Raiders. And you can feel that in this building. You can feel it from the employees. Like last night, uh, you know, six o'clock at night, uh, my wife gets a call from, from Ainsley Moore, who works in football operations, and she kind of gave my wife a rundown of, what's going to go on today, what's going to go on in the future. Um, and she, would just, she was so nice, so detailed, so organized. And my wife gets off the phone. She's like, wow, these, you know, they, they've got it there. Like, they know how it works. And that's important. Um, you know, to win a championship is more than just, you know, the head coach and general manager. It takes everybody. Um, so to see someone like that right off the bat know, hey, look, this is how you treat people, and this is how organized and detailed we're going to be, um, it's just a great example for the whole organization. Um, and then lastly, um, you know, I'm really excited to partner with AP right here. Um, you know, you can tell in the interview, right, it was really my interview, um, but you could tell, like, he has that leadership trait that a head coach has to have. And it's really, to me, it feels more like, you know, not so much follow me, but join me, which I like in football, because um, he's right in it with, with the rest of us. Um, and I think, you know, the... Your football team takes on the identity of your head coach, and that's what we're going to have here. That's what we're going to build around. Um, I'm excited to start this partnership, and I uh, couldn't be more excited to, to be a Raider. So I'll leave it there with that, and I'll pass it over to our new head coach. I start off like I always do, or at least I end. We've got a great house here. Patrick Graham, good to see you, man. Um, but we always end all our victories a certain way in the locker room. So we've got a packed house here. We're going to see how everybody's vocal cords work. So stay with me. You ready? Raiders! Yeah, now we warmed up. See, that's what we're talking about. Antonio Pierce, uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mark Davis, Sandra, Richard, Tom, Larry, Ken. Uh, the Raiders organization, um, our coaches, our players. I said at the very beginning when I had an opportunity to speak in front of everybody the first time on November 1st, I'm humbled, I'm honored, I'm excited. I'm excited. The challenge that this team took on uh, from November 1st on and what they embraced and what they displayed out on the field is hats off to our organization and our coaches and our players for buying in. It wasn't easy. It was something that probably many people didn't think would happen, as you say, overnight. But when you have good people in the building, when you have the belief, you have the trust, you have the accountability, you earn respect, you do it the Raider way, 
you buy in, you understand that nobody's bigger than the shield and the patch, and that you play for a lot more than just the name on your back. There's a lot of people that we affect by wins and losses. We understand that, and we don't take it lightly. I like to thank my family here, Jocelyn, my father, Perry, my kids, my uncle in the back came all the way from Bermuda, Bermuda in the house, Piper. Yeah, Bermuda. <laughs> all right, got the island people in here too, so. Um, appreciate everybody being here. Where are we going forward? Tom just hit on it. It's great to partner up. I think there's gonna be a partnership that we can grow for for many years. Hopefully that comes with a lot of W's and a lot of Raider chants. Our vision is clear. Win a division. Get into the playoffs and host that Lombardi Trophy. That's not a promise, that's our vision. Our philosophy is simple, it's real simple. It's the right away. Pride, poise, poise, passionate, a love for the game, and just win. It starts with our DNA, ill intent, physicality, toughness, speed, attitude, full-blown Max Crosby effort. And it goes to our staff with preparation and execution and putting a plan together and executing throughout the week with a smile and a purpose to get a victory on every Sunday that we show up into Allegiant Stadium. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be overnight. I'm not promise anything no, along with Tom, but I do know this. You're going to get the best out of myself and Tom. We're going to exhaust every possible resource, an ounce of sweat, tears, and effort, and night, and minute, and second that we have to turn this bad boy into a consistent winning organization that it's used to and that it deserves. One thing we know, and they're in the room, is our alumni. As you guys saw in the last game, open doors. Post game as well. Raider Nation. That bad boy good. <laughs> that bad boy ready to rock. It rocked the last game. We set the tone in 2024 what it looked like going forward. And we're going to work this offseason, in the summer, and in the fall until we get to that first home game to see Raider Nation again, loud, rowdy, making it tough for the opponent, that black hole rocking and rolling, the wind club doing this deal, Mark Davis in there clapping his hands away along with Sandra, high-fiving and putting a product on the field that the Raider Nation is really proud of. And like I said before, I am humbled and honored to be a kid from inner city Los Angeles, to be the head coach of a team that he grew up watching, rooting for, cheering for, rocking the colors, rocking the starter jacket, and now sitting here doing each and every day with the purpose of one thing only, just win. Thank you. Okay, now we'll open it up for questions from the media. Please raise your hand. Ashley and Jade are on each aisle here. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Vinny. Hey, uh, Tom, uh, congratulations. Um, Thanks, Ben. Uh, see you here in Las Vegas. Uh, from your perspective, your track record, your history, uh, the respect that you have in the NFL, I'm sure there were other you know, opportunities out there for you. What about this organization at this particular time you piqued your interest? You know, it's kind of what I said from the beginning. I mean, there's just such a storied history here and tradition. Um, I, you know, I grew up as a kid. I was obviously a football fan, NFL fan, been in the league a long time. Um, you know, it'd be a chance to be part of an organization with the L. Davis legacy. Um, it's just, it's just like, it's so exciting to have. And then on top of that, I mean, you look at the resources that are here um, and the head coach that's here, um, I think we can win. That, that's why I want to be here. There's, there's two things I was really looking for. One was fit. I want to work with people that I like. Um, and two, I want to win. And those two both go together, that we can win and work together and really enjoy this journey. Because it's a tough journey. I mean, it's a hard job. We all know the pressures that come with the job. Um, but we can work side by side with a smile on our face and get things done. So there was you know, two things, find the right fit and a chance to win. And that's what they have here. Uh, Tashawn Reed with The Athletic. Uh, Tom, how would you describe your roster building philosophy? And then on a, kind of a second part of that, how, does you, how do you go about involving the head coach you know, in that process and making sure that they're consulted along the way? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, 
I wouldn't even use the word consulted. I mean, when I said partnership, it, it's a partnership. So um, obviously there's a lot of people that are part of the process. You've got a scouting staff and a coaching staff. Um, you kind of bring it all together in the end um, and make decisions. But, you know, as far as building the roster, you know, you're working through the vision of the head coach. You know, how does he want to play on offense? How does he want to play in defense? How does he want to play on special teams? And you build it that way. Um, and there'll be, there's a lot of discussions. You work through things. Um, we're going to be able to bounce ideas off each other. Um, as far as roster construction, um, there's no one specific way to build a team. Um, I, I do believe in the draft, and that's always, I mean, everybody always says that anyways, but I do believe in the draft. But you also have to supplement that with free agency. You have to supplement that with trades. You have to supplement that with signing players that maybe are out of work or on the street looking for jobs and think they can come in and fit. Um, but you have to use every possible avenue you can um, under the constraints of the salary cap, which is you know, basically every move you make, even a draft pick, there's always cap considerations that we have to work through. Um, but uh, I think in this day and age, in this league, uh, you better be flexible with how you build your team. Um, it's because it's so competitive, and we, we all really have the same resource when it comes to money and the cap. So, um, but uh, like I said, it's, it's a partnership for a reason because it's not a one-person job, and I don't have all the answers. So we're going to use all these people that we have, scouts, coaches, and the head coach. We're going to make the right decision for the Raiders. Tom, two questions for you. Hondo Carpenter, Sports Illustrated, it's Fan Nation. Um, number one, most general managers, when you come in, it's a place in shambles. AP has it rocking, has it rolling, and it's his team. He's put his stamp on this franchise. How big of a blessing is that to come in? You're not looking, hoping to find a coach. You got him. Yeah, quite honestly, I, you know, when I interviewed for this job, I didn't see it as like it was that the head coach's job was open and like he's the head coach. Um, you know, AP came in, you know, in short notice and produced on the field. Um, didn't do anything to not have the job. So he had the job at the end of the year. He was a head coach when I came in an interview. That's, that's the way I kind of looked at it. Um, just the way he, he galvanized the team, he galvanized the building, he galvanized the fan base. Um, so that is a huge part of it because um, you have to get that right. Um, so to have that in place, obviously, yeah, a big part of, of taking this job is to have that, to have a leader like this um, that we've already seen on the field what he can do. Um, so it's exciting. Secondly, Drew Stanton told me, a mutual friend of ours last night, that one of your strengths as a general manager is relationship, that players can trust you in your word. Will you talk about your philosophy of relationship with players, please? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to me, a relationship with a player is no different than a relationship with your family, with your friends. I mean, you treat them, treat them well, you're honest with them. Um, doesn't necessarily always mean that what you tell them they're going to like, but if you're honest with them and straight with them, I think they appreciate that. Um, and, you know, we, what we'll do here, which I know they do already, but, you know, these players for us, they're not just a player with a helmet on. I mean, they have families, they have lives off, off the field. It's important to us to know that and work through that. So, um, and really, when you're in this spot and when you're the head coach and you got players out there battling for you every game, practicing games, training room, weight room, and I, I realize that they're, they're paid for their job, but, I mean, you can't help to have, you know, relationships with those guys. I mean, they're going to battle for you every week. So, and that's the way this business is, the way football is. That's why it's so great. It's the greatest team sport in the world. So, um, yeah, the players are important to me to, to make sure they know that we care and to make sure they know that what they need, um, come see us. Because we'll see, hopefully we can get that done and find the right resources for them. But yeah, that's important. Uh, I think everybody in, in here, you know, you treat the players the way you treat your family. Antonio, Paul Gutierrez here from ESPN. Um, firstly, I don't know if you guys had a relationship before, you, yourself and Tom, but how quickly did you mention the, the 63 points you guys put on the Chargers? But also... <laughs> right away, you know it. <laughs> I told him I was going for 71. Yeah. We're going to go for two, but never go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Jeez. But also... How important is it to you as a young coach, relatively young coach, to have a guy who's been a GM for a decade already in the NFL? Yeah, me and Tom had never met prior. Uh, obviously, I've watched his body of work um, with the San Diego Chargers and then, this, then lastly with the Los Angeles Chargers. But um, obviously, when we met, when he came in the other day, I could see that he was genuine. He was poised. He was calm. He had a plan. Uh, he presented it. It was well thought out. He knows I was poking at him, trying to get him going, trying to get, get that AP juice out of him, but he stayed very poker face, which is like, okay, cool, that's good. Um, but I, I think as this relationship grows, like anything else, you know, it's going to have its ups and downs. Uh, we got to be adults and grown men about it. We got to hash it out. Uh, we got to understand our roles, check our egos at the door like we do everybody else in the building, but understand that we got a plan. And that plan is to do it together. 
be hand in hand with it. I mean, obviously, if he goes down, I go down. That's just how it is. That's the nature of the beast. We get it. Um, but that's not our plan. Our plan is to win, put a team in place uh, that is competitive each and every week and gives ourselves an opportunity to win. Appreciate the question, though. He did. I did tell him that, right? I, I, we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't happy. He, he didn't see Jack's play, though, right? Can I tell you a story? So, boom, here it goes. I tell him, I'm tell you anyway. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, he's like, ah, you know, I was getting mad. I'm coming down the elevator, and, you know, we're at, you know, where we're, we're at score wise. And we're, we're pushing it on defense, and he says he's in the elevator, and I think Jack Jones just intercepted the ball while he was yeah. up there. Yeah. He's like, why? Like, why? That's, that's enough. You Never know, seen that? anything like it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we talked about it, hashing out, said, look, we're, we'll, we'll do that now together going forward. <laughs> Tom, congratulations. Levi Edwards with the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, obviously, you've been in the league for a long time. Uh, could you give a little bit of a, a scouting report on Antonio Pierce uh, as a player of what you believe in? Of those qualifications and those qualities that he had as a player, what do you think will translate or does translate to him as a coach? You know, that, that's a great question. Um, if you look at his career, um, you know, back to high school where junior college first, then goes Division I um, linebacker, and then undrafted, and then wins a starting job and has a career he had, Obviously, he's a grinder and he works because nothing was given to him, um, which, yeah, you can hang your head on that as a head coach um, because there's a lot of players in your roster. They're, they're the same way. Not, not everyone in your roster is, you know, Devontae Adams. So um, to have that mentality, um, that dog mentality that I'm going to outwork people, um, it's great to have. So now my scouting report on him, I may have to go look. I forgot. I kind of lost track. I may have to go look that up. But. We had a couple That's, games. He was with the Colts. Yeah, that was way back. I think my files are gone from the Colts. But, uh, no, he was a player to be reckoned with for a long time um, because of his instincts, his smarts, and he can run to the football. So as we're looking for defensive players, we can just point to the head coach, hey, like, if you can play like him, you can play for us. Uh, Vic Tafer from The Athletic. Uh, congrats to both of you guys. Uh, Mark mentioned there's work to be done. I'm uh, wondering, what are you guys looking for in an offensive coordinator? Yes, sir. You can take it. Yeah, that's a great minimum 24 points. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'll be honest, uh, just like everything else that we've done throughout this process, I, I honestly believe this. I don't think everybody's meant to be for the Raiders. I don't think everybody's meant to play for the Raiders or coach for the Raiders. I think that's going to be something I really dig into as we go into that process. Uh, but more importantly, somebody that's um, – the way the game is, you know, and you know, AP wants to run the ball. No, AP just wants to run a style of football and, and run the ball the, way, the, the football style a certain way. But it's, it's the approach. It's being a teacher. It's being somebody that can stand in front of this room and the man that's looking at them, like you looking at me, that they believe in the plan and the process and that they're a teacher and that they can adjust on the fly, right, because that's what this game's about. Style of play, I think that's all that's going to vary. There's a lot of things that goes into that, right? I mean, we know that we have some positions on our roster that we need to look at and evaluate even more with Tom and myself as we, as we go forward. But you know you want, you know what you see in the National Football League. You got to be able to run a football, play action pass, and what are the Raiders known for? The vertical passing game, right? So we want to see the shots down the field. We want the expl explosive plays. So that has to be a part of the creativity. Uh, you know, you look at the shifts, the motions, all that stuff goes into it. I'm not going to give my whole hat away and tip, but just think of when Raiders were playing really good football, and that's going to be your offensive of coordinator, hopefully, as we go forward. I'll just go with his answer. No, Tom. I think, I think you know, one thing I talked about in the interview is um, you want to have an identity. The Raiders have an identity on offense. It's speed and get the ball downfield. So I think that's going to definitely want to be at least part of that. Um, but there's more that goes along with that um, as far as being able to run the ball when you have to run it and play action pass. But we'll, we'll find the right head coach or the right offensive coordinator that's going to fit this team at this time. Q Myers, Radio Nation Radio 920. And Tom, with that being said, with it being the end of January, how do you attack this offseason knowing the draft's right around the corner? And how important is it that you're coming from the AFC West so you have familiarity with the division already? Um, yeah, I think it helps. I mean, the. Um, you know, like, like AP said, the first goal is win the division. So um, I do have some experience there. Um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, thankfully the draft's in April, so we have some time, but we got a lot of work to do. I, I need to get caught up um, with our guys here. And more than likely what I'll do, I'll, I'll kind of adjust to them from here through April rather than have, them, you know, 10, 15, 20 people adjust to me. So um, we start on that this morning. We'll get moving on that. But I'm um, looking forward to really getting in depth with the pro staff, the college staff, and, but we got, we got plenty of time. We'll be good.
AP, the last time we spoke to you, you talked about not enjoying the moment. You were just grinding. So can you take us in that moment after Mark told you you got the job, your dream had been reached, can, that first time you had to reflect after you got it, can you take us into those moments and your thoughts, please? Yeah. Um, I did probably like I did on you know, October 31st when I got the first phone call. I walked outside to our practice field and just looked around. It was quiet. It was dark. You know, looking at the stars, just kind of looking up there and just saying, you know, wow, you know, um, surreal. And then just really taking in a moment. And as you can tell, enjoying the moment, right? Today's about, today's a celebration. Today's the first step. You remember what I said when I first got in front of you? I said, my worst day is going to be my first day. Well, this is my first day, and this is going to be my best day, and I'm going to celebrate it, and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to have fun with it because I know there's going to be some ups and downs. There's going to be some, some days where, you know, you want to go hide in a corner <laughs> and don't want to talk to nobody. That's why when I first got the conversation, I first got the call from Mark that I went outside by myself and looked up, looked up to the sky. Uh, Case Kiefer, Las Vegas Sun, congratulations uh, to both you guys. Tom, uh, and I know, I know you said it's going to be part of the process to really dig into to what you have here, but I'm sure some of that's already started, just getting ready for the, the interviews and things. Uh, what, what, what stood out about these rosters and some of the decisions you'll have to uh, make coming up? Yeah, I tell you, the one thing that's kind of jumped at me, like obviously in the division, you know, I know the Raiders pretty well, but I, knew, I know him as an opponent, which is just completely different than knowing this team from being in this building you know, the practices every day and everything that goes into being a football player at this level. So um, I've had a lot of learning to do right now to get, like, up to speed with everything in the building and then get up to speed with, like, the whole roster. Like I said, it's just a big difference knowing them as opponents and rather than knowing them as, you know, as the GM of this team. So got a lot of work to do coming up here. But thankfully, AP's here, so that's going to make the transition a lot smoother. I'm Mark Anderson, Associated Press, um, free of the one of you. People always wonder about the quarterback. What's their evaluation of Aiden, and what do you think about the position going forward? Yeah, I'll tell you what, what I just said before. It's like I have a lot of learning to do to figure out this team from the inside, not from the outside. Um, obviously, Aiden played pretty well against us, so that's, that, that's a plus. But um, I need to get a lot more in depth with this team as far as more than just a couple games and then talk with the staff. So we, we got to do that at every position. Um, and that's really probably number one is, at least for me, I have to get to know this team as well as I knew the team I just came from, which I don't yet, um, but I'm going to get there pretty quick. I thought you saw growth with Aiden, to be honest. I thought at the end of the season he was playing some really good football. Obviously, that led to some wins for us. But taking care of the football, being responsible, being more vocal, I think he put himself in a position to learn what it's like to be a pro in off season because he could reflect on what he just did, right? If he didn't have those opportunities, he would never know what mistakes he made. So I think it was a great learning tool for him. Now that we have it on film, like Tom said, to evaluate it and really look at it going for it. Uh, Antonio, Jesse Merrick, NBC Las Vegas. Uh, now that it's come to fruition, what did it mean to you, just the, the support that you got from the guys in your locker room, uh, you know, pushing for you to get this job? Yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing like it. The reason the National Football League is the greatest um, sport in America is because of the players. And when the, when most of the time when the players speak, we listen. When the players play, we watch, right? And they did both this year. So to have that support, being a former player, to understand what it's like. And now the way and the day of air, the age we're in, where your voice matters and you have a lot of platforms to do it, you just got to be careful, right? You got to be careful. You love support, but never take it too far. But it was humbling. It was, um, it was a special moment. But it was even more special when you, know, you get the phone call from Mr. Davis that you're the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. More questions, guys? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for coming. Thank you, media and staff. Thank you. Thank you.